Hi, I'm Olivia Dean and welcome to Learning at Home TV, where we bring lessons to Queensland Primary School students who are staying connected with teachers via the television. On today's show, our early year students will be shown some very useful skills as they learn about letters, sounds and syllables that make up words, about telling the time by the hour and about the benefits of recycling. So kids, I hope you're feeling focused and ready to learn and of course, have some fun. Alright guys, before we click our brains into learning mode, let's get our bodies awake and our energy levels up. And if you master these movement exercises, I think it'll make you very popular with the adult members of your household. Hi, I'm Jason. I'm Edmund and I'm in grade one. Fantastic. And uh, do you like to help out around the house, Edmund? Yeah. What do you like to do? Clean my room. Clean your room? I'm sure your parents and family love you doing that for them. Would you like to join me in helping with some chores today? Yeah. Yeah, we're going to wash my car. You happy to wash my car? Yeah. All right. Jump off the couch and then you guys try as well. So what we're going to do, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to wash the bonnet and the roof of the car. Are we ready? So we're going to get up on our toes. We're going to up nice and high. Reach up. You've got to wash and move your hands. That's it. Side to side. Big circles, big circles, big circles. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go down and we're going to wash the tyres and the rims. That's it. You already knew. That's it. We're going to wash. Wash those rims. Wash those tyres. Really big washing. Wash, 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 wash. Last thing we're going to do is we're actually going to vacuum out the back of the car. So we're going to go down on our knees and our hands like this. That's it. We're going to pretend we've got a little vacuum cleaner in our hand. We're going to go forward and back. And forward and back. Can you do it with your other hand? And back. Forward and back. Excellent. Edmund, thank you for helping me wash the car today. Did you have fun? Mm-hmm. Back to learning. Well done, Edmund. You can wash my car whenever you choose. But for now, we will begin our learning which means we need to be seated comfortably and prepared to give the teachers our full attention. Now we're going to start with a song and a lesson about syllables. Hello everyone, my name is Laura and today we're going to look at letters and sounds. Before we start, let's remember what we already know about letters. I know that there's 26 letters in the alphabet. Do you know the song we can sing about the letters of the alphabet? If you know it, please join me in singing. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, and Z. Now I know my A, B, C, Next time, won't you sing with me? That was fun. We just sang all 26 letters of the alphabet. Special delivery, letter of the day. Oh, I love letter of the day. Oh, letter of the day, what do you say? It's time to play the letter of the day. Hmm, let's open the envelope and find out what the letter of the day is. The letter of the day is the letter N. I can see uppercase letter N and lowercase letter N. Let's now look at the learning object right on to see how to write uppercase and lowercase N. Lowercase N. Start at the star. Top to bottom, retrace and up, quick turn and down. Start at the star, top to bottom, retrace and up, quick turn and down. Uppercase N. Top to bottom, pencil lift, top to bottom, pencil lift, top to bottom, stop. Top to bottom, pencil lift, top to bottom, pencil lift, top to bottom, stop. I know that letters represent sounds that we say. Hmm. 
Do you know the sound that the letter N makes? That's right. The letter N makes a mmm sound. Special delivery. Sound of the day. The sound mmm. <gasps> I love special deliveries. Sounds like there's objects in our box. I wonder if they start with the sound mmm. I can see three objects. I can see a nest, a purse, and a necklace. One of these words does not start with the n sound. I wonder which one it could be. Nest, yes. Nest starts with the n sound. Purse, no. Purse does not start with the n sound. It starts with a p sound. Necklace, necklace, yes. Necklace starts with the n sound. The two words nest and necklace start with the n sound. I know the word purse does not start with the same sound. Purse does not start with the letter N. The two words nest and necklace start with the N sound. These words start with the letter N. Did you hear that? I think my friend Sarah has arrived. Hello, Laura. Hi, Sarah. Hi, everyone. You have come along to help us learn about syllables. I have. Could you please start by telling us what a syllable is. Sure. Well, a syllable is a unit or part of sound within a word. When I say the word necklace, I can hear two parts, neck, lace. I'm going to hit my drum as I say the word now. You count how many times I hit my drum. Neck, lace. I hit the drum two times. There are two syllables or parts in the word necklace. Great work, Sarah. Could we try another word? Of course, Laura. Mm, let's try the word nest. When I say the word nest, I can hear one part. I'm going to hit my drum as I say the word now. You count how many times I hit my drum. Nest. I hit the drum once. There is one syllable or part in the word nest. You are so good at that and you have taught us a lot about syllables, but let's try another game. I've brought along two circles and the numbers here represent the syllables in the words we're going to say. I have brought along Sarah's name and we're going to clap her name to find out how many syllables are in the name Sarah. Excellent. Great thinking, Laura. Okay, let's hear how many syllables are in my name, Sarah. When I say the word Sarah, I can hear two parts, Sarah. I'm going to clap as I say the word now, Sarah. I heard two claps. I have two syllables in my name. So I'll put my name, Sarah, in the circle that has a two. Great work, Sarah. I'd love a turn now. I'm going to try my name, Laura. I'm going to clap my name to see how many syllables are in my name, one or two. Laura. I heard two claps, so I have two syllables in my name. Thank you, Sarah. Laura and Sarah both have two syllables. Great work, Sarah. Great work too, Laura. Today we looked at words with one and two syllables, but we know that sometimes words have more than two syllables too. That's so true. Sarah, thank you for coming along today and teaching us about syllables. Today we looked at letters, sounds and syllables. We talked about the letter N and learnt the sound that the letter N makes. Mmm. My friend Sarah helped us learn about syllables. Now it's your turn. Hunt for objects around your house that start with the letter N. Try using a drum or clap your hands to learn how many syllables there are in those words. 
See you next time. Bye. Bye, everyone. Bye, Laura. Bye, Sarah. Tick-tock, tick-tock. Can you guess what we're learning about in mathematics today? That's right, we'll be learning about telling the time. Now, clocks come in all shapes and sizes, and there are even different types of them. The one thing that they have in common is that they are all very useful in everyday life. Hello, everyone. My name is Nigel, and today I'm going to be talking about telling the time. We know that clocks can be used to measure time. They can tell you how long something takes and when something's due to happen. But before we start, let's remember some important things about clocks. Tick tock, tick tock. Hmm, can you hear that? Here's a picture of a clock. Did you know that clocks can be analog or digital? This clock is an analog clock. Analog clocks come in all different shapes and sizes, but the one thing they have in common is a face. On the face of a clock, you will see numbers. Have a look at this analog clock. I made this clock from a paper plate and using some materials from around my home. And I'm going to place these 12 numbers around my clock and count them as I do it. One, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. As you can see, there are twelve numbers on the face of this clock, and the number twelve is always at the top, and the number six is always at the bottom, and the other numbers are always spread evenly in between. Now, can you see anything else on this analog clock face? That's right, there are hands. All analog clocks have two hands. There's a long hand and a short hand. The short hand is called the hour hand, as it tells the hour of the day. And the long hand is called the minute hand, because it tells us how many minutes into the hour it is. And when the long hand is on the number 12, it's known as an o'clock time. On this clock, the long hand is pointing to the 12, so it is an o'clock time. The short hand points to the hour. The short hand is pointing to the nine, so the time is nine o'clock. When the hands of an analog clock move, they always go in the same direction, clockwise. This means the clock hands move from the top to the right, and then down, then to the left, and back up to the top. Both the hands on the analog clock move at the same time. The long hand goes all the way around the clock in one hour. The short hand only moves to the next number in one hour. We do lots of different things at different times during our day. Let's look at Neo's day and we'll be sequencing events from his school day in the correct order. And then we'll look at the analog clock to tell what time these events happened. At the beginning of the day, Neo eats his breakfast. Next, he arrives at school. And during the day, he does lots of activities to help him learn. After that, school finishes and Neo gets ready to go home. And finally, at the end of the day, he arrives home by bus. Now that we have correctly sequenced the events from Neo's school day, we are going to help him tell the time on the analog clock. Let's look at all the different times on the clock during Neo's school day. Neo ate breakfast at seven o'clock. On this clock, the long hand is on the 12, so we know it's an o'clock time, and the short hand is on the seven. So this clock tells us the time is seven o'clock. What time did Neo arrive at school? 
On this clock, the long hand is on the 12, and the short hand is on the 9. So this clock tells us that the time is 9 o'clock. Neo arrived at school at 9 o'clock. We know Neo did schoolwork during the day, but when did he do it? Here, the long hand is on the 12, and the short hand is on the 12 too. So this clock tells us the time is 12 o'clock. What time did school finish? On this clock, the long hand is on the 12 and the short hand is on the 3. The time is 3 o'clock. After Neo's very busy day, what time did he arrive home? Here, the long hand is on the 12 and the short hand is on the 4. So the time is 4 o'clock. What a busy day at school Neo's had. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock, I can hear those clocks again. Here is our analogue clock and another clock next to it that's telling the time. This is a digital clock. Digital clocks are different from analogue clocks. On digital clocks, the numbers change to tell us the time. Now, I've made this digital clock using cardboard. And when we read the time on a digital clock, we read the hour first as that tells us what hour of the day it is. And the last two numbers on a digital clock show the minutes. And they tell us how many minutes into the hour we are. When the last two numbers on a digital clock are zeros, it's an o'clock time. And the time on this digital clock is 12 o'clock. Let's find out the time on some other digital clocks. I'll read the hour first. It's a four. I know that the two zeros after, uh, at the end, mean that it's an o'clock time. So it's four o'clock. This digital clock has a two showing the hour. It's two o'clock. Let's compare an analog clock and a digital clock side by side. Both these clocks are showing five o'clock. On the analog clock, you can see that the short hand is on the five and the long hand is on the 12, so it's five o'clock. The digital clock is reading five o'clock also. It's showing the five first, followed by the two zeros, which means it's five o'clock. Today we've learnt about telling o'clock time. O'clock time on an analog and a digital clock. We know that clocks measure time. They tell you how long something takes and when something's due to happen. Thanks so much for joining me today. You might like to go on a hunt around your house and find where you have clocks. Decide whether they're analog or digital. And have a go at telling the time. Have fun, bye for now. Oh, it's time now to chat about wellbeing. It's important to make sure that we look after our bodies by staying fit and healthy. And it's also very important that we do things that make us feel good about ourselves. Here is one idea that might help you to keep a positive attitude. Hi, my name is Diana and this is Melissa. She is a teacher of the deaf. Looking after your wellbeing keeps you happy and healthy. One way to help you remember and keep track of looking after your wellbeing is a journal. A journal is somewhere where you can write things down or draw. You can make a journal on a device, in a book or on pieces of paper. You get to choose because it's yours. We're going to split our page into six sections. Number one, how I share kindness to others. Write in here what you have done to show kindness. For example, I helped my mum with the washing. Two, how I feel. In here, write how you're feeling today. For example, I'm excited. Three, how I move. Make sure you are moving each day and write it on this box. Four, how I slept. Last night, I went to bed at 8 o'clock and I woke up at 6am, so I had a great sleep. 5. How I eat. Make sure you are eating well. In here, you can draw or write all the things you have eaten and the water you have had today. 6. Gratitude. What are you grateful for today? You can keep this journal each day. 
It will help remind you of things you can do to look after your wellbeing. Thanks for joining us for this Brain Break. Welcome back to Learning at Home TV. Now, how many rubbish bins do you have at your place? Have you noticed that the bins have different coloured lids? And we must be very careful to read the instructions so that we always put rubbish in the correct bin. In Science Today, we're going to explore recycling and what happens to materials after you've finished with them. Hi, I'm Angie. I have a pile of rubbish here. There are bottles and boxes, cans and papers. Well, it's rubbish to me because I don't want it anymore. But do you know a lot of this stuff is too good to dump? Some of these materials are really useful and they can be given another life by being made into something new. My used paper can be used to make new paper or cardboard. It may come back as a book or a box. This aluminium can could be used to make new aluminium objects. Maybe one day it will be part of an aeroplane or at least another can. That would be better than being dumped into landfill or ending up on a beach somewhere. Collecting used materials to make new things is called recycling. If we collect useful materials and sort them out, factories can use them. Factories can make new paper, glass, metal and plastic by recycling used paper, glass, metal and plastic. If they have more used materials, they won't have to use up so much of Earth's resources. Also, we wouldn't have to dump so much rubbish in landfill. So, can we help to stop wasting useful materials? We can sort our rubbish into the right bins. The one with the yellow lid is for the materials that can be recycled. Some people have a green bin which is for plant waste that can be turned into garden mulch. And the red bin is for anything that's left over. It goes to the landfill. Landfill is where our rubbish is buried in big holes in the ground. Let's have a look at my pile of rubbish and see what can go in the yellow bin. When we identify what a material is and put it in the right group, that's working scientifically. Now, let's look at this paper and the cardboard. It can be recycled, so it can go into the yellow bin. And what about these metal cans? Can they be recycled? Yes, they can also go in the recycling group. What about these glass objects? Can they be recycled? Yes. So let's place them in the recycling group. Well, that's a little bit complicated. There's a few types of plastic, and at the moment, the recyclers only want the hard plastic. So these containers go into the yellow bin group, However, these plastic wrappers can't be recycled. So they go into the red bin and they will end up in a landfill. And finally, there's my bag of fruit and veggie scraps. Do you think they go into the recycling bin? Actually, they don't go to recycling. 
Instead, I can put them in the compost bin in my garden and they can become fertiliser. Now that we've sorted the different types of material, there's not much left to go to the landfill bin. And that's great news for our environment. So you can see that most of my rubbish isn't really rubbish at all. It can be quite useful. OK, let's look back at what we've learnt today. We now know that some materials can be recycled and we can sort materials at home so that useful materials can be reused by factories. Now it's your turn. You could talk to the people in your home about how the rubbish is sorted. You might be able to give some useful materials another life by saving them from going to landfill. I hope you can. Thank you and see you next time. And we're back and we have another student with us to share some moves from one of his favourite sports. I'll let you join him for a brain break as I say goodbye. And middle primary kids, you can get ready for your lessons now. I'll see you all again soon. Hi, I'm Lauren. Hi, I'm Kaylin. I'm in grade five. Kaylin, what's one of your favourite hobbies? One of my favourite hobbies is swimming. Me too. Shall we do some swimming moves today? Yeah, sure. Let's get active now. The first one we're going to do is our breaststroke arms. So bend our knees. Pull out and do big scoops under our arms. That's it. Breast stroke. A couple more big scoops and push. Scoop and push. Nice. The next one is our streamline position. This is really important for when we're pushing off the wall or doing a turn. Squat and push up in streamline. Excellent. Like a rocket. One more. Yeah, nice. Now we're going to practice our backstroke kick. Let's get down on our bottom. Put our, knee, our legs out the front and kick our feet. Oh, work that tummy. Good job. Are you tired? Sorry. I am. <laughs> Woo! Nice work. <sighs> Thanks for doing swimming moves with me today. Chat. See you next time. Bye.